Hello everyone, thank you all for, for signing on to meet Igor, who's uh, the Regional Manager for Europe for Banfi. Um, I'm sure he'll tell us a lot more about the company, uh, but it's um, American origin, but uh, first uh, moved into Tuscany in um, 1978 and is very highly thought of and immensely influential in the work on Sangiovese, which um, Igor is going to uh, talk about. Um, Igor himself um, is a sommelier and teacher at the Italian Sommelier Association. Um, he says, um, I love this, he's a former MW student, um, but wasn't good enough. I think that's very sad. And um, he's a wine lover. He grew up uh, with drops of wine in the milk he was given to drink as a child. So that's a pretty good start. Um, and he also loves Brunello. Uh, he was um, with the winemaker Matteo giving a, um, a webinar for Louis Latour uh, back in April. And um, at that stage, he referred to Brunello as your lover forever. So over to um, Igor to tell us all about the work that Banfi is doing on Sangiovese. Thank you, Liz, for a nice introduction uh, about the drop of wine in the milk. That's absolutely true. So this is why I'm here today talking about wines. So everything started much long ago. <laughs> so I'm so honored to be here with you today. And my goal is trying to, uh, let's say, bring you in Banfi today. The, the, the picture back to my uh, face is not where I am now. I'm in my apartment in Verona, but uh, this is how Banfi is looking like. Here's a wonderful estate in Montalcino, central part of Italy. All of you definitely know it. And in, we are, as you correctly say, Liz, we are an American-Italian family, uh, still today, owned by the same Mariani family that was immigrates in the United States uh, many years ago, let's talk about centuries, and then back to uh, Montalcino in the 70s to buy a huge part of the land, about 3,000 hectares, 2,900. And they, let's say, established a, a state-of-the-art winery combined with the, the most advanced science, coming with a very, uh, let's say, precise goal to be the builders of Brunello, and they actually became the, build, the builders of Brunello in, in the short term, because Brunello is, although it's very famous and one of the most important Italian appellations, to, to not say in the top two or three, is a real short history compared with Burgundy or Bordeaux or other, let's say, uh, traditional European areas of wine production. So Banfi definitely gave a new uh, input, a new life to Brunello di Montalcino as we are uh, knowing it today. So I'm trying to share the screen with you and showing some picture of the estate so you can maybe uh, figure out what I'm talking about. Okay. So as I say, the Banfi estate is about 2,900 hectares and uh, one third is vineyards and the rest is forest is uh, Olive trees, he has uh, plums. So we are the first producer in Italy of plums. That's hilarious, talking about a wine estate. But we are also uh, uh, the most, the biggest contiguous wine estate in Europe, maybe in definitely the biggest. So it, that means that the, the picture you see now with the, that little map is the old estate of Banfi that we still own today. And is the same size that it was in 78 when the Mariani family came to Montalcino and purchased such a big land. At that time, uh, of course, Italy was moving from an agricultural country to an industrial area, and nobody wants to stay in Montalcino working in the middle of nowhere for producing wines. No safe salaries, uh, difficult conditions, so the cost of the land was extremely low compared with what it is today. Today, we're talking about 600,000, to 1 million euros per hectare of Sangiovese for Brunello. So the investment was extremely uh, fair and very, very advantageous still uh, in 78. So these are the four Brunellos that Banfi is producing and we actually can define ourselves as the builders of Brunello because even if 
we did not invent Brunello, that was the Biondi Santa family. We were the first, definitely, to export Brunello all over the world. And thanks to the Buffy company, the Mariani company in the in US, New York, Buffy Winterness, existing still since 1919, so 100 years old. Uh, we were capable to export the Brunello in the US and then finally with a lot of new uh, good ratings and awards we also exported all over the world and nowadays our Brunello is in 90 countries all around the world. So the let's say keywords of the Mariani family and, and Banfi today are these pioneering research sharing and respect so it was a smart vision from from family to uh, mark the road and to, uh, let's say, base our estate and business on study, research, uh, education, in the respect of the environment and, of course, of the community. So we did uh, a lot of pioneer introduction in the wine business and new tools, new ideas, and we definitely changed the way to uh, mean the, the wine production, not only in Montalcino, but I would say in, in the whole uh, area. So uh, we were the first actually to divide our land in zones and micro vinify every little zone, uh, just trying to study the differences in the soils, composition, in the microclimates in every corner of the estate. And still today we have 29 kind of different soils in Banffy and every little vineyard that we identify, it's not a vineyard actually, it's really a, a zone, a, a little area, is uh, picked, uh, fermented, and uh, aged separately in order to be, uh, let's say, a constellation of single vineyard, a kind of uh, micro vinification for every little zone that are going to be blended together uh, before becoming Brunello di Montalcino, for instance. And of course, to follow up this kind of uh, new idea of zonation and dividing the land, we invented the the horizon system is the picture you've seen now. It's a new fermenting system that we patented, licensed, and invented by ourselves, to try to combine and to match uh, stainless steel with wood together in these hybrid tanks, 177 hectoliters, that can work partially or entirely or in couples, depending on our needs in order to follow up, as I said, the zonation. So every little micro zone that we identified in our estate is micro vinified in these uh, hybrid tanks and then following his own age and just uh, blending together before the bottling uh, when becoming Brunello or other wines. So this is only for the red wines, but it was since 2007 that we started to produce wine to ferment red wines in these incredible, incredible uh, uh, tanks. So, of course, uh, we are very well famous for this, the study on the Sangiovese and the research of Sangiovese. So, since the beginning, we identified that not all of the grapes in our territory were the same, of course, and basing our estate and business on Sangiovese, the most important Tuscan variety and Italian variety, we uh, felt the need to study deeply this grape variety. And since the beginning, we discovered about 650 different kind of clones of Sangiovese. That means that combined with 29 kind of soils and microclimate and different zones and age of the plants, the combination to produce wines were incredibly huge. So by studying every single clone of Sangiovese for 10 years and more, micro vinificating all of them, we uh, now reduce the number of the clones we use to 18 for the basic Brunello and to three for the Poggio Le Mura. That are the three clones you can see in this slide. So Janos 50, Janos 10 and BF 30 are the three names of the Sangiovese clones that we are using for our, let's say, uh, niche Brunello. Poggio Le Mura takes the name from the castle because it's vineyards surrounding our castle. And for the first time in the history, in 97, we made a Brunello with only three of these clones of Sangiovese. Now the goal is to spread these three clones and to replant in the whole estate. But still today, the basic Brunello di Montalcino by Banfi is made with 18 clones. 
So that means that the whole 650 were studied deeply, identified. We made a huge book, uh, maybe the, the most complete book about Sangiovese existing, and where all of the parameters and the study and the cases that we verified and experimented in the vineyards were, of course, uh, written down. And you can go deeply, and if you want to just sleep very well in the night, you can take a couple of pages of the book, and you will definitely have wonderful dreams. So, uh, of course, this is the, the, the result, as I said, of the three wines made with only three clones of Sangiovese. The one in the middle is the, the first one ever made, Poggio le Mura Brunello di Montalcino. And uh, one on the left is the Rosso di Montalcino, and on the right, the Riserva. So all of these three take the name, as I said, from the castle. Poggio is the hill in Tuscan dialect, and Mura are the walls, so it's basically uh, the vineyard surrounding our castle and where these free clones were planted in the beginning because of the wonderful and fantastic position, mainly. But something that probably will be more interesting for you is what we did in, in the agriculture to be that, let's say, uh, uh, knowledgeable in terms of Sangiovese. So, uh, as I said, we try to, let's say, divide the, the landing zone and to pick grapes separately, to vinify, to ferment, and blah, blah. But to face the, the, the problems that we had in, in the past, and also we're still having today for global warming, for instance, we invented, thanks to a colleague of mine, Gianni Grassi, which is now the, uh, uh, Gianni Sovelli, sorry, is now uh, the agronomist in chief, of Banfi, we invented a new trellising system, the, la the one on the left. It's a yen shaped uh, little tree called Alberello Banfi that we patented once again and presented about 10 years ago, 13 years ago. And is working together with a sport cordon and trying to optimize after years and years of research how the Sangiovese is growing up how is responding to the lack of water in hot, very hot vintages, and mainly a nice, let's say, attempt to reduce the ESCA disease. So this is a plant that is working a little higher than sported cordon. So the bunches are only in four canes. So this is reducing the number of elements and micro ingredients, that are also water, that need to the plants to, to live but at the same time increasing the, uh, the uh, passage of the air in the middle of the grapes, I'm sorry, not that technical, but also to give a more healthy situation for the bunches. And at the same time, reducing the number of work. So it's a, it's a very, let's say, uh, simple uh, recipe because it's a low input farming, uh, asking for lower treatments is low uh, ingredients used to uh, to feed the plants and low number of cuts. So the ESCA disease, as you probably know, uh, is very spread all over Europe, especially in hot uh, regions, uh, hot climate regions like we are in Montalcino. And it seems like there's a relationship between the number of pruning of cuts with the number of ESCA uh, disease problem. So reducing the number of pruning, and this is the case of Alberello Banfi, you also reduce the incidence, the affections of ESCA on the plants. So this was, uh, of course, just a limited uh, reduction, but very helpful for us to keep on studying and experimenting with this kind of Alberello Banfi. And now we are trying to reconvert, so, so to, let's say, change when replanting the spur cordon with Alberello Banfi. That's absolutely uh, another new pioneer invention by Banfi that is coming only by study and study and keep on working on, you know, passion. Because Gianni is a colleague of mine, which is in Banfi since the beginning. He was a child, we can say. And after more than 30 years in the company, he was keep on trying and trying. And in the end, this was absolutely one of the most uh, successful invention or let's say idea that we could have in the agriculture. But the second one that is coming from a need is the experimental vineyards. I don't have a picture, but it's not that different from the one you can see on the right. So in 2016, 
we started uh, a new uh, experimental vineyards uh, laboratory, let's say. It's two vineyards uh, planted in two opposite situations, so in the flat, let's say, 60, 70 uh, meters on the sea level, and in the up in the hill, 250 meters, with the same uh, kind of, uh, I will tell you now, crosses, hybrids, grape varieties, uh, rootstocks, but in different conditions. And in six years' time, our, uh, let's say, goal, the, the main goal of this operation, of these experimental vineyards, is to find a natural uh, way for these grapes to survive. So the goal is, together with the University of San Michele Alladice and Rauschedo is, uh, is a, uh, a plant uh, laboratory, is the, the goal is to find a natural survival way for the grape varieties in these two experimental uh, vineyards. They are four hectares in total, and we have divided the experiment in four micro, fam micro family. The first is crosses, so it's crosses between uh, grapes with uh, huge characteristics, uh, resistance to botrytis, uh, small barriers, Kin is very thick, uh, let's say, uh, reduced fertility. So let's say very powerful since the beginning. Crossing with other grapes like that, not existing yet and not uh, defined yet. And they are treated separately to see how they will react to different kinds of soil conditions, uh, weather condition, uh, chemicals that we use. So every single cross is treated separately. The second family is hybrids, so varieties already uh, registered but not possible to be cultivated in Tuscany. So uh, one of these is, for instance, a Saperavi from Georgia with the same goal and aim to be uh, natural surviving. And also this will be treated separately, each of them, and in six years time, they will do micro vinification every year to, to see if not only the, the grapes, but also the wines coming from these experiment, will re, how they will react to different kind of condition. Number three is grape varieties that we can cultivate in Italy, but not in Tuscany. And number four is how the Sangiovese is reacting to different kind of rootstocks. Also, uh, root, rootstocks not even planted in Tuscany yet, and not in Banfi, of course and how they will face the increase of uh, weather condition and tem average temperature year by year. So this huge experiment will last until uh, 2022 at least, and then we will see if keep on going or not, but it's one of the, let's say, only way for a company like us, huge and big and with a, a, a nice reputation in study and, and research, is the only way I was saying to keep on studying to increase our, uh, let's say, credibility to also face the new problems that in a few years will come to Montalcino. The average uh, temperature is definitely much higher than it was only 10 or 20 years ago. And for sure in 10 and 20 years will be even higher. So alcohol will be a problem in the balance with uh, canopy management, the acidity, uh, the lack of water, that this will be issues that we need to face still today, already now, to, uh, to be ready for the next future. So uh, something else that we, for the first time, introduced in Montalcino was the choose of the oak. So as you know, Brunello must be aged in wood for two years, mandatory by the law. So instead of buying barrique or big oak casks, we are buying uh, staves in France, selected by our winemaker with our, of course, uh, technical team. In, in France, we are selecting from uh, Fontainebleau, Allier, Troncé, Limousine, so beautiful forest. That's very, let's say, high quality for, for barriques. And then we ship uh, staves to Italy and age open space for years at least in Banfi. So in order to be let's say naturally and gentle aged. Then a partner of Banfi is called Gamba, is doing barrels for us. We don't use any barrique 225 liters, but the smallest we have in the company is 350, so 350 liters, almost 50% bigger. And also huge uh, French 
uh, oak casks like these, 60, 90, 120 hectoliters. We were used to make uh, big casks in Slavonian oak in the past. Now we are moving to French oak for the most, but they are steamed and not made by fire, so they will not give any uh, toastiness, uh, vanilla sensation, sweetness to the to the wines, but only a kind of microoxidations uh, aging. So reducing, of course, the number of barriques to send uh, and the CO2 saved for the shipment and whatever, we can already say that that was a, another uh, part of our keywords that I showed in the beginning is sustainability. So what we did since the beginning, as I said, was to, to uh, find a way to be sustainable in all of the process of the winemaking. So, I remember that, that John Mariani, the founder, said that each action, oh sorry, I went up too fast, that each action must be uh, socially fair, environmental uh, safe, economically feasible, and of course, uh, we firmly believe that sustainability is a, is a concept that is, you know, involving all of the stages of the production chain. So it's a cross strategy, it's a well-defined plan, it's a long-term plan. And all of these things I wrote down here are part of our sustainable heritage. So, uh, first of all, water saving, as I say, uh, Montalcino is facing an increase in the weather, uh, in the hot temperatures, and a lack of water. So, we created some artificial lakes to collect rain and to clean up the rain and to recycle the water we also made a kind of bio bed is the pictures on the left uh, with the straw and uh, compost is a is a huge place where we are yeah, let's say putting the water used for uh, cleaning in the winery which is automatically cleaned by the bacteria which are formed by the mixture of straw and compost together this bacteria will filter naturally the water that in usually a couple of years time will be ready again to be used in the cleaning of the winery. It's simple, it's very uh, clever, I would say. It takes a little longer time, but it's a wonderful way for us to save the water. And we use about one liter of, uh, sorry, 10 liter of waters to make one liter of wine. So Banfi is almost uh, 900 hectares in Montalcino. So that means that we produce something like 10 million bottles of wine per year. And so it's a huge amount of water that we need just for cleaning every year. And thanks to these systems, we can recycle the 80% of it, which is a, a huge advantage, not only for uh, uh, the business and economically, and for, uh, of course, the, uh, commercially speaking, but also for the environment. Then we were the first to reduce the, the weight of the bottles from uh, 720 to 480 and then 360 grams. Also, once again, uh, saving uh, CO2 for shipments and whatever. We are uh, trying to uh, protect the environment by keeping woods, all of the animals existing, all of the plants and vegetable uh, native and uh, flora and fauna existing in our area. We made uh, nine, 90 miles of water uh, drainage ditches just to, uh, let's say, avoid erosion. And we are now actually producing also some different kind of uh, product, not only wine, of course, wine is our core business, but we uh, have hives and produce honey with our bees. Then we do a pasta, banfi pasta with a natural, and organic uh, wheat is called uh, Senatore Capelli. So if you will have the chance tomorrow to come to the castle in our restaurant and have a wonderful spaghetti or pici al pomodoro, there will be banfi made pasta. So, and you will love for sure. It's, it's uh, addiction, uh, addictive, as you say. <laughs> so, and we, as again, and as a part of the, let's say sustainability, we must be economically sustainable and also we must share what we did with the community in Montalcino. So we are part of many different kind of let's say cultural events. So we have in Banfi a glass museum but even more uh, let's say weird. We found and is the picture on the bottom on the right. We found in our vineyards the bones 
of a whale fossil, which is an entire whale that we cleaned up gently, not, not we, but the University of Florence, if I well remember. And then after years and years of work, it is now possible to come and visit the whale fossil at the museum into the castle of Banfi, of course, for free. So a lot of uh, classrooms and uh, schools are coming from everywhere just to see how amazing it can be to find a whale fossil in the middle of the countryside in, at one and a half hours from the sea in Montalcin. And then we are the sponsor of some uh, unique event like Jazz and Wine is the 22nd edition. It was 2020 this year, made with a lot of problems with the COVID situation, but we did it. And the Eroica bicycle race is a very nice race uh, running through the vineyards with all the bicycle. The youngest can be 78, so not easy, quite tough. I did it once and I, I thought I was going to die, but it's absolutely beautiful and a, a wonderful way to see the landscape to uh, admire the beauty of Montalcino and to share for us with the community, of course. Then finally, uh, what is also very important for us is just to, to briefly uh, update you with the COVID situation. So in the beginning of, of the lockdown in Italy, that was uh, the 11th of March, we were so afraid of that, of course, because closing down was uh, a problem for, for all of us, especially for, for wine producers. And so during the COVID uh, lockdown, so three months, and still today in the 409 employees of Banfi, none of them had the COVID. So, and we test many. And so we luckily never stopped working in the whole uh, COVID lockdown. So we were following very strictly all of the rules of production. That means that in the winery, we were working only with groups and limited groups with the same people all of the time and in the same timing. And then changing, that we were quite, let's say, uh, we, we could quite uh, easily recover in case of COVID with some of these groups just by, uh, let's say, uh, limiting their access to the winery, but luckily that didn't happen. And at the same time, we were able to keep on shipping all over the world. So that was, of course, at least one of the measures that we take for just trying to survive in this difficult situation. But luckily what we could do from the uh, commercial point of view is to use all of the uh, instruments that the Italian government gave to the producer. So for instance, uh, the coverage of part of the salary with funds coming from the government. So none of us lost his job. But some of us, of course, got the salary paid for the half for one quarter, depending, by the government. And this is still happening today. So the government gave uh, this possibility until the end of October, if I'm not wrong. And then what is, was more important to, let's say, relaunch the sales of wine, especially in Italy, was to uh, give some more instruments and more, let's say, be patient with our agents, with our clients, in the Oreca especially. Because even, even if the off trade was surviving during the lockdown and in sometimes also increasing sales, we are selling 70% even more maybe of our turnover in on trade or ECA. So uh, in, in Italy, uh, all of the restaurants were closed in those three months and reopening in June. And so we gave a little delay in payments. We trying to give more let's say, uh, commissions to the agent trying to sell more wines in the reopening. And this was working a lot. First of all, for the relationship. So uh, the, the wine business is made on people and relationships. So we were able to keep very good and loyal uh, relationship. Once again, not only with the agents selling Banfi in Italy, but also with the clients. So uh, I think that Banfi is one of the unique company you can also see people working with us since 1978, so 42 years. They started that were really, let's say, teenagers, and now they are coming a little older just with Banfi. And some of the agents working with us in Italy, we have 120, one for every province of Italy, are still together with us since 30 years and more. So this kind of relationship and cultivated relationship keep on uh, stable condition, trying to be uh, 
wealth uh, in a wealth situation with them was definitely helping us to uh, survive the COVID situation. And then, of course, we lost uh, turnover uh, as all of the winery in the world. So those three months will be impossible to recover. So let's say that situation in Italy, we got a meeting last week is about uh, from 40 to 35, 30% less than last year. Now, the year to date, uh, we are about 30 something. So it would be, uh, let's say, the best scenario to close the 2020 with a minus 25 or minus 20% compared with 2019. Uh, and hopefully this this will be just thanks to the Christmas days, we'll see. And the same is all over the world. So if Italy luckily is uh, reopening and all the restaurants are working, even if let's say 70% of, of the past, uh, the situation as you well know in the UK, but all over Europe and also in Asia is not that easy. So we lost some of the key markets like China, like uh, Japan, uh, in the most of Europe was locked down like Italy and many places restaurants are not reopening yet or working the half or bankrupt or closing down so the situation in the Orca is definitely much more difficult than in the off trade so we luckily uh, differentiating our portfolio and our sales so we can face another another difficult six months three months, sorry, from now to the end of the year, but we will define ourselves happy if we can, let's say, limit uh, the problems to the minus 25, let's say, just to be open and honest, because this is, I think, the average situation for all the Italian wine producer. What is probably uh, different in Banfi is that, as I say, we are uh, very solid and to be that big as a company, was also a big advantage in terms of not only wine production, but also in sales. So we were also once again, based on a very loyal collaboration also into the company. So this was another way to limit, let's say the, the problems and to help our, my colleagues and our employees in these crazy times. And finally, Harvest 2020, we just finished on the 15th of September with the whites. So as you uh, probably know, we are not only red producer, but we are focusing a lot on Vermentino grape variety, which is uh, native from uh, Sardinia, Toscana, and Liguria, three regions of Italy. And we finished just a few, few days ago. All of the whites uh, were already picked. So we started with Sangiovese just uh, the last week and with the Sangiovese for Brunello today. It seems like uh, the, the vintage 2020 is now, you know, we Italian are a bit, uh, we shouldn't say, but finger crossed, it seems like it's a very, very promising vintage in terms of high quality. Uh, our winemaker, we were chatting last week, said that it was a long time that they couldn't see such a huge quality in the grapes like 2020. And this is uh, also, of course, maybe, thanks to uh, the wild three months of spring that gave us the possibility to, let's say, run the nature free and wild, but also for the uh, today conditions that are absolutely fantastic. What we are facing now, and is incredible, there is no humidity. So the grapes uh, by our agronomist, he said it to me today because I was asking, they're losing about, I wrote it down because I couldn't believe, 2% uh, of the volume every day because it's very windy, it's very dry, it's not uh, humidity, as I said. So perfectly in, in quality condition, but of course we will get lost in the crop because these kind of berries will be a little smaller and the total amount of grapes we can pick will not be the same as 2019. So ideally 15% uh, less than last year. But last was a, a very uh, generous uh, vintage. So if this is keep on going and it seems like it will be like that for the whole week and for the beginning of the next as well, it will be a, a wonderful 2020 uh, vintage. So some rain is coming, but thanks God, this will be a, a, a good news. So I hope I can, I, I could give you a, a panorama of what Banfi is. So I'm ready for every question if you have, of course or just stop me because I'm Italian and I can 
keep on. Speaking. I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm gonna rescue you now. Um, Eagle. Um, hello, hello, everybody. If you don't know me, I'm Kate Sweet, and I'm the the PR for, uh, for Banffy in the UK, um, and uh, I'm the I'm the person that that got uh, got Igor into this on his Friday afternoon in Italy. Um, so thank you for that, Igor. I've been um, noting um, as we go along some, some various questions. Um, so if people would like to ask questions, um, please throw them into the chat or wave or something and I think Andrea will can unmute you um, but I'm just going to quickly um, run through I think that was really um, informative thank you Igor um, okay. so just a couple of questions first of all the Alberello um, that um, your colleague has has developed on the vineyard um, I take it that all the new plantings at Bamfi will be Alberello, is this something that you're sharing with the wider um, community in Montalcino? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question indeed. We are, as I say, quite uh, proud to share our new innovations and research and studies. So yes, the, the, the answer is yes, we will share. We already shared and we are planning to move the, the whole Banff Vineyards into Alberello in the next years, definitely. And we just faced that, uh, we just, luckily, uh, we are happy to say that many of our, let's say, uh, neighborhoods already uh, started planting a kind of alberello in their vineyards because it's really working. It's not only, as I say, the question of agriculture and economical, economical uh, issue, but it's also very, let's say, gentle with the environment and giving high quality to the Sangiovese. So I can't see no reason to not plant uh, Alberello also in the rest of Montalcino. The good thing is maybe, I don't know if I say it, is that you don't need to replant the whole vineyards to uh, change some Sangiovese with Alberello because luckily it's working really well in the same, you, you've seen Kate because you came down to us a couple of times, it working, it's working in the same role with Sported Cordo. So in case of a, of a death plant of Sangiovese, only one in a row of 100, you can just replace that one with an alberello in the same sport card online, which is absolutely fantastic for the economy. So uh, the, the change of the plantation with alberello will be gentle and soft. So, and not uh, drastic or uh, sudden, all of a sudden as maybe you, someone can imagine. So it will be a very slow innovation and for sure, and if you come down to Montecino in 10 years, I'm sure that you will see so many Alberta all around and not only in Bath. So thank you. Thank you, Igor. I can see that um, Liz has a couple of questions and I can see also that Meg has asked a question and I think they're along the same lines. So Liz, I think you're unmuted. Do you want to take over from me asking questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Igor. Uh, thank you. The um, hybrid uh, stainless steel and wood tank, uh, is that now available commercially to other uh, uh, producers and if so are they using it and um, Meg uh, was asking uh, about if you could uh, say more about the design of these tanks and the particular advantages of them. Yeah those are very good questions as well so as we did with the Alberello uh, our pride was our to share also the innovation with uh, these kind of hybrid tanks. And when we invented, the, the main reason was to find, let's say, a better way to avoid oxidation, to uh, fix the color and to soften the tannins, which are actually the three uh, biggest parameters in the Sangiovese production. Sangiovese is very luck. No, it's not luck, but it, Sangiovese for Brunello is not that deep color. Uh, tannins are, of course, very high. Uh, maybe compare with uh, Nebbiolo in some cases. And oxidation is uh, the evil for uh, Brunello di Montalcino because five years aging by the law is a long time. So if we, we, we were used in the past to have those kind of, um, let's say, terroir hints uh, in Montalcino, it's something similar, they say, in Burgundy when it's, uh, let's say, a slight oxidation or something Sometimes can be bread, can be everything. So Sangiovese is, is a wild horse. It's difficult to be uh, vinified as well as cultivated. So to try to avoid all of these 
passages and parameters and to help the centrifuges to be richer and more, let's say, uh, gentle and soft with the tannins, we invented these new uh, hybrid tanks. And they are in, in the central part made by oak, so it is uh, French oak. And in the top and the bottom is just like a matrioska style. If you think about the Russian matrioska that you open up and there's another smaller inside, they work like that. So there are three parts uh, assembled together and the upper and the lower part can be uh, just, uh, let's say, opened or uh, moved to take the central part away and to be replaced in after 10 years of use. And indeed, this is what is happening in 2017. After 10 years of use, we should replace the wood in the middle. And this was made thanks a, a, a very clever way on trails of moving up these big tanks because they are 177 hectoliters. So as you can imagine, it's not easy to manage. But from the technical point of view, the stainless steel is definitely uh, the best way uh, for us to, to work on the temperatures, on the fermenting temperatures. So we can uh, warm up the must or definitely cool down the must. And sometimes we uh, could realize that uh, slower and cooler fermentation of San Giovese was giving best, better results than a very uh, warm and short fermentation that was done in the past. So sometimes, depending on the micro zones, because everyone, as I said, can work independently, we can act and work on the temperature of fermentation thanks to the, the stainless steel. The wood is, a, is a, let's say, an ingredient that has always been used in the fermentation of Sangiovese, of course. I would say it's mandatory to ferment in wood because this is the best way, uh, once again, to soften the tannins, especially and to, let's say, help the color to be fixed. And this kind of oak is, together with the temperature, working in a better fixing and of the color, but mainly in a soft, in softening the tannins. So uh, the best example is just uh, 2006 and 2007. Seven was the first time we used Horizon, and six was the last with the old technology. Old were simple barrel fermentation, uh, more or less uh, same dimension of the wood casks that you have seen in thousand wineries, but both, and that's the funny part, were five-star vintages, 2006 and 2007. So just now, if you taste the wines now, you have a, a clear differentiation from the two. But at that time, when the seven was ready, the first mm, things we noticed is that color was definitely more brilliant, more, let's say, pure, uh, less garnet and a little bit more ruby. And oxidation was definitely, uh, I wouldn't say new world style of fermentation, but almost like. So no oxidation. And that was so important because the wine then is going for two years in casks. And that will be the oxidation. And finally, a kind of purity of the fruit that was not the same in the past 2006. Of course, it's not a matter of a better taste or worse taste. It's just a technical way to, to let's say, operate in uh, taking care of the oxidation and temperatures. So finally, what we can say is that the wine coming from the horizon, it was looking just a little bit younger than in the non-horizon wines fermented the, the, the previous years since the beginning. So this is a big advantage for a wine that it must be aged for five years and then uh, aging potential, let's say for 20 and more years in a bottle. So we share these uh, hybrid tanks with many uh, wineries all over the world. They came from everywhere, really, also from America, some from Australia. And we are so happy to say, please have a look and, and tell me what, what's your opinion. And even double pride, if we will see the Horizon Hybrid Tank somewhere else in the world. So why not? That's part of the Banff philosophy. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I have got a second question, if I may. Um, the lightweight bottle, is it used for all the wines in the range? And if so, what's the market reaction to, um, uh, for a very high level wine to be sold in a much lighter than usual bottle? 
Yeah, of course, they are not useful for the whole uh, wine portfolio. That would not be possible, of course. So, for instance, Brunello Montecino is the same, but uh, wait, we, it was 10 years ago. Let's say a little lower, but instead of 720, maybe 680, something like this. But the all entry level wines and let's say mid price range wines are from 480 now to 360 grams. So that means that the most of the Northern Europe uh, markets, they, they react uh, definitely very well. Uh, in some of the monopoly markets in Scandinavia, they are asking for these kind of wines. Also, uh, many national accounts in the UK are asking for fair trade uh, products. So these are definitely fair trade in terms of shipping costs, uh, of packaging costs, of glass production and glass uh, reuse. So the reaction was definitely very, very good. And it was in a moment, uh, uh, I confess, that <laughs> some Italians uh, producer and, and were fascinating to, to make wines in huge, heavy and bold bottles. And some of them still doing today. So, but you know, uh, time is running fast, so it wouldn't be possible to sell a bottle like that in the Northern Europe today, especially in, I'm talking about the Monopoly, but uh, in the most of the world, this kind of attention to sustainability and organic and, let's say, ethic way of business is so important. So I think it was really a, a milestone for Banfi to, to use lightweight bottle before the demand. So uh, it's not only, as I say, a question of economic uh, saving, but also ethical. So it's really a natural part of our philosophy that was uh, an innovation at that time and today a pride. And just finally to follow on, on that, are you planning to reduce the weight of the uh, uh, of your heavier bottles? Um, I don't know, honestly, but why not? I mean, the only way that, that we kept the, the weight as it is, the only reason is that on, on the Castello Banfi bottle, the premium ones we produce, there's a kind of a crest uh, in the glass. And that's a little, let's say, uh, higher weight than the others. But if you compare with the past, as I said, it's already been reduced. So I, I can't see no reason. What is very important and that's easy to understand is that Brunello, for instance, is uh, a long aging wines that can, let's say, survive in, in cellars for years and years. So it wouldn't be possible nowadays to use 360 grams bottles for Brunello Montalcino and pretend they are going to resist for, I don't know, 20 years in a cellar. Maybe that happens, but maybe not. And then the quality of the glass as well. So. Uh, quality is not related to weight, of course, but the most of the cases we are keeping the premium wines we produce with the traditional weight bottles. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah, something that maybe I forgot to say, and this is the opportunity, uh, unless some questions are coming, is that what was really affected in Italy by the COVID and also Banfi is the tourism because we are a, a country living on tourism. And so hospitality for the Italians in general is in the blood, as well as in Banfi. So we have a castle with uh, 14 beautiful suites and is a, in, in a relay and chateau chain. It's really luxury place to go. And we closed down, of course, mandatory because it was not allowed to come from March to uh, June. So and we are now reopening just few weeks ago. So we thought that finding a way to revitalize the tourism, not only for Banfi, but in general, was the best way to give a, a push to the economy and living like Italy on the tourism. So if all of us is trying to, let's say, uh, use open space uh, estates and nature and let's say, uh, big places like ours, that would be much easier than going in big cities or, I don't know, uh, big hotels with uh, 2,000 rooms. So I think that there, there has been a nice review of the style of tourism in Italy, which is now for the country, 
the countryside instead of the big cities and for, I don't know, independent houses, maybe with a nice swimming pool or, I don't know, in the middle of, of the countryside again. So to revitalize the tourism for us was a kind of a rebirth after the COVID uh, lockdown. So it, it, we were <laughs> so happy to host the Jazz and Wine Festival as well to reopen the hotel because it, it's like a, <laughs> a sign that everything is going back slightly to normality. So tourism, I hope it will be reopened also for English or for population all over the world, but it would be nice to me to maybe invest in a kind of a natural tourism or wine tourism that is definitely not uh, in crowded situation with a lot of people and with the masks. So take the chance if you have <laughs> the possibility to jump on a, on, a, on a plane and come down to Italy. I think that I think the good news, Igor, is that the British government haven't imposed quarantine on returning from Italy yet. Oh, so, <laughs> um, so I I vote that the next Circle of Wine Writers event takes place at Banffy. Oh, that would um, be fantastic! You're it, very welcome we'll, anytime. We'll all be there very shortly. Um, <laughs> so unless anybody else has any questions, um, I probably will start to wrap up. I think because we're getting on for 50, 50 or so minutes. Um, so I um, thank you to Igor. Um, I think you've been absolutely fascinating. Um, great nice. news that the um, that the 2020 harvest has been so uh, positive, uh, particularly under the circumstances. Um, and I will um, be in touch with people um, very shortly because we have exciting news about certainly Rosso de Montalcino and some Brunello de Montalcino. I think going into Majestic towards the end of the year. So yeah. um, some nice listings coming up as well. Um, so I shall, um, I'm going to, I'm going to finish. Um, Liz, I don't know if you have anything further that you wish to say. I do. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Igor on behalf of all of us. Um, I'd also yes. like to say thank you to Kate in communications and Latour for um, uh, organizing it for us. Um, it's a real pleasure. And apart from the focus on the lovely Brunellos, I'd just like to say I've been uh, drinking La Petigola, which oh. is um, Vermentino. And wow, it's beautiful. Um, oh. I've always thought of Vermentino <laughs> as, a, as an island w wine um, from Sardinia, especially, but La Petigola is absolutely beautiful. And it's oh. a Christ, so, you uh, made my day. I'm so happy now. <laughs> and you know, it's Friday afternoon in Italy. I couldn't say aperitif time, but almost. So I'm going to open a bottle of La Petigola as well now. <laughs> it's, nearly, it's nearly four o'clock. I think on a Friday, that's that's the sun's mm. past the yard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you, Liz. Cheers, everybody. Thank, thank you for joining, you. and uh, thank you for your nice comments in the in the chat. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all again before too long in person. <laughs>